and welcome to episode 4 of Click Team Fusion Tutorials. So today we are going to be looking at how to use arrays, why we need to use arrays, basically everything about arrays. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin, welcome to episode 4. So today it's all about arrays. Now we know uh, from episode uh, 1, 2 and 3 that our tiles are being generated randomly, which sounds really good because uh, every time the user plays they'll have a different experience and actually a lot of games use randomised dungeons and things like that to keep it fresh and to make sure it has replayability. However, there's a 50-50 chance at the, mo at the moment that our little guy is going to be created in the middle of the sea. And there's also a chance where the entire level could be C. So actually we want to create some structure for this game. So we want to preload what the tiles are going to be. If you think about all the big games like Zelda and Pokemon and, and a whole load of others, they have the same map and they try and create replayability elsewhere. And even in a lot of the games that have randomised dungeons, they also have areas that aren't randomised. So we need a way of creating structure to our randomised chaos. And that's where arrays come in. Arrays are very, very simple. Just think of Microsoft Excel and you're fine. The only difference between Microsoft Excel and arrays, well, apart from the fact that arrays aren't owned by Microsoft, they are a concept in all uh, programming languages. The only difference, really, that breaks down with Microsoft is that arrays can be three-dimensional. In fact, you can have four and five and six-dimensional arrays. We don't have to worry about that. Um, Click Team only worries about three dimensions. You can actually have a one-dimensional array. Let's not go into that. So, if you think about a two-dimensional array first, that's like Microsoft Excel, because you can go across, yeah? So you've got the columns, and then you've got the rows. Okay, you've got the X, and you've got the Y, right? Which actually suits us pretty well. If you think about it, our tiles are created using the X and the Y, okay? So actually it's incredibly useful. Second thing, I said that they can be three-dimensional. Now, imagine, yes, we want to talk about this tile, but we also want to put some values to different things, such as, is the player in this tile? and is there a building in this tile as well as like, a nice grass background? So three-dimensional arrays can help us an awful lot. However, it's probably easier I show you this about how to create an array. We're going to be looking at how to store the array. However, we're going to be doing a lot of the theoretical and then in the next video we're going to look at how we apply it to our game. So, let's get started. Now, I'm using the same uh, file as I created last time. So if I run it now, you can see what we did in episode 3, so I can move around the board, but again, all of these tiles are randomised, which is not helpful. There we go, so I can walk around it. Uh, now creating an array is dead simple, just double click anywhere, and there's loads of different ways to do this, the quickest is just double click, and up here just type in array. And you, with arrays, um, it doesn't matter where you put them. You can actually put them in the middle, but I might want to create a nice background or something in here. So I normally just leave it to the left-hand side. The reason I leave it to the left-hand side is I normally scroll either right or down. So if I leave it to the left-hand side, it won't get in the way. It, it is actually invisible when you start playing the game, so it doesn't matter where you put it. But it's just easier for me, because if I want to put some items down here to scroll to, whatever, um, then it's just easier to see. I, I don't know why. I always keep them on the left hand side. Now if I click on it and go hit up here, now yours might be down here, I've just rearranged them. It says X dimension. Now if you think about that, Microsoft Excel goes on infinitely. If you keep scrolling it will keep going. I think there is an upper limit of some ridiculous number which I found out once. However, with these ones, uh, you put the limit in. Now at the moment it's only 10 across, that doesn't mean that you can't go above 10. Uh, if you create something on the 11th X, uh, then it will just extend the array. So don't worry too much about these numbers. Basically, the bigger these numbers are, 
the more memory it will take. But modern computers, modern iPhones, modern Android, whatever, they can cope with a very, very large arrays. Only when you get to the ridiculous numbers do they start to struggle. The Y dimension, okay, so this X dimension is how far right or how far across your um, array is. The Y dimension is how far down. Now, if it's 10 across and 10 down, then that's 100 spaces, 100 pieces of information that we've got in our array. The Z dimension is default to 1 because normally people want to use it at just exactly the same as Microsoft Excel. So you, one dimension is the default. However, as I said, if you want to store more information into each one of these cells, uh, so it's like storing multiple bits of information onto Microsoft Excel, then you can extend this. Now, uh, there are normally two types of arrays. Some programming languages do just one type that's very flexible. Some are very strict over the type. You can either have text or a number array. Okay, and it's really important you pick the right one. Text array will always have things in quotes. Uh, so any anything, any string, which we call like words. Um, but you can also put numbers in it, but they have to be stored as a string. Okay, and this is quite a complex programming language thing that you keep numbers and words and other things apart. Now, I'm going to just do it as a simple number array. Now, number array has to be a number. Um, it's not going to have quotes around it. So if I try and put the letter A in, it won't like it because it's not a number. And by it, it won't like it. It just won't write it. Um, so if you choose a number array, make sure you're only using numbers. Now, this confuses a lot of people. It says base one index. Again, most programming languages, they start the x dimension and y dimension at zero not one and there's an awful lot of things even in click team which start at zero rather than one if you remember the fast loops which we did the other day uh, they all start at zero because of that i like to untick this box so i can remember that everything starts at zero i don't like some things starting at one and some things starting at zero so if i want to write something to the first ones of both of these then I'll say that x equals 0 and y equals 0 and that will write it there okay global to this application is really important if you have multiple frames okay so you might have this array on your second frame and it will use the same data if you don't tick that then it will just pretend it will treat it as a brand new array so you can't bring the data between different levels or different frames so if we extend this game later on, it might be important that we tick that. So we're going to just try and write an array. So I'm going to go to the event editor. Now I already have a loop already creating these tiles. So I'm going to use that loop and in fact I'm going to nick the expression for it. So I'm going to nick this so I don't have to type it again. And I'm going to right click on the array and I'm going to write now this is really important. If you write, if your array is a string array, which ours isn't, then you have to use these ones. If your array is a value array, then you have to use these ones. Now I'm going to write value to x and y because I want a two-dimensional array. Do I want a two-dimensional array? Well, actually, I tell you what, I want a three-dimensional array. Not because I'm going to use the z dimension, but it allows me to use it if I choose to later on. So I'm going to do a three-dimensional array. So I'm going to do x, y, z. So, uh, this is here, well, remember what I said about it being one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional. One dimensional is just a list. It do, it's just a, a long list of numbers. This one, as I said, is more like Microsoft Excel and then this one's like super Microsoft Excel that you're allowed to store multiple things in each cell. So this is probably a good one for later on. So you enter the value first. Now, remember what I said, for values, you can't write in some string, okay? You can't write in words. Even if I write a number, because it's got the quotes around it, it's treating it as a string. So I have to, let's do the number 10, okay? That's just arbitrary, I'm just making up a number. For the x index, 
I'm going to use the loop index of x so it will change each time, change each loop. So we'll write it for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I can't remember how many we had. And then I'm going to change this for y. Click OK. Now the z index, we just want it to be in the first one. So we want all of these to be in the first z index. Now remember I untick the base 1 index. So the first um, cell for z will be 0. So I click OK. That looks good. Now, if I run it now, you won't notice any difference. It's exactly the same. Nothing's happened. Because that behind the scenes, there is an array with uh, stuff in, but there's no way of viewing it. So we have to save the array. So I'm going to save the array on a spacebar press. Okay. And we go go to write. Uh, no, we're not. Go go to files. We're going to say save array to file. Okay, now I can choose somewhere to save this to, but it will, if I export this game, if I sell this game and someone else uses this game, whatever, then they might not have the same directory as me. So I always use an expression, and click to make this so easy. You right click on special and go to file names. This one here will save you so much hassle. It's application path name. It's where it's the folder where they've stored their game, whoever they are. Everyone has a folder that they've got their game in, their exe file or other thing if, if you use a different exporter. They've all got one. So if I click on that, that goes to that folder. Now I want to add a little bit more into that because I need to add the name of my file. So I'm going to do plus which is the concatenator in Clickton Fusion. And we'll put this in quotes. Now, I know Microsoft Windows uses backslashes, unlike the internet that uses forward slashes. And I'm just going to type in array.r. Now, that .r can be anything. It could be .gilpin or .clickteam. But try and use something that, you know, is obvious what it is. It's r for array. I use R also because a lot of other people use .R for array files, but it can actually be anything. You don't need to do .R, but if I did .PDF, then it will try and open it as a PDF file on most systems. So I'll use one that I know Microsoft and other companies don't have, or Adobe, whatever, don't have an extension for already. And I click OK. Right. If I run application, drag it across, and I'm going to press spacebar. And you're thinking, <laughs> okay, nothing's happened again. Well, actually, something has happened. So if I close this down, and I go to the directory which this is saved in, uh, I'm just doing this behind the scenes. Okay. You'll notice that the file now, wherever you've stored your .mfa file, the file has magically appeared. And it's created oh, this this minute. Now, yeah, that's great. But if you try and view that, which I can view it as, so if I open with, uh, let's try Notepad, which everyone or all the Microsoft users have. <laughs> it doesn't look very uh, um, readable. Okay. Array files aren't stored in a way that you can actually view them. Some things are, if you did a .csv file or XML, you'll be able to view them on, on um, Notepad or Microsoft Excel. This uh, .array file or .r or whatever you want to call it is not something you can edit with Notepad. So how do we view it? Well, you can see that I've just downloaded uh, a program that some other ClickTeam users made. There are loads of them out there, but I'll put a link to this in the description. But if you type in Array Viewer Click Team or just Array Viewer, there's loads out there. If I double click on it and open it up, okay, then it's just like Microsoft Excel. The difference is, is this top bit is the Z index. Okay, so if I go to Array, now we chose a number array, so I'm going to click Number, so it's all set up ready for the numbers. And if I click file open, now we go to episode four. Oh, if I double click right. Now this is the moment of truth. 
This is the moment of truth now. Now notice uh, .r came up because I think this is configured to look for .r files, they are .arr files. And I'm kind of crossing my fingers here because I don't know whether this will work. And it does, thank goodness for that. So you can see for all of our tiles, there's a number 10 there. Now there's zeros there which mean, well, we didn't write anything to them. The default is zero for a number array. For a string array, the default is just nothing. There's nothing in their files. Now for this program, if you go to the top right and you click, it scrolls across and you can see that it goes up to 19 and then nothing, okay? So this is actually our map, which it doesn't look like it because the rows are like, um, the width of the rows are bigger than the height. Okay, and we know that our map is square, but this is actually our map. Now we're gonna be working the other way with this. We want to write to this file to create a map and then get click team to draw the map for us to create the map that we draw on this eventually we're also going to be going to <laughs> try and uh, create a map editor within the game itself so there's a lot for us to do now I'm not going to click back to me unfortunately because my light has died well, I might try it and see if I'm barely visible oh that's horrendous oh so unprofessional so Next episode, we're going to try and work backwards. So we're going to create the the level on this, save it, and then try and get Click Team to create it. So <laughs> wish us good luck for next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please click subscribe if you want to see more, and like if you want to see more. Thank you very much.